demo. We're going to go into DBase Plus. Okay, and here I want to show you how to do a quick form which has some sales data and how to do a little programming on it and how to deploy it into an executable. So the first thing we need is the data. Um, I've already created a sales uh, table here, so I want to show you though how to go in and design the table. So we'll go into right click and then we'll do design table. Okay, and here we have our sales table designer. Um, we can add the field name, uh, any of the types of fields, uh, any of the settings, the width, decimal, etc. You can set a simple index, ascending or descending, or if you want to do a more complex index, you can go to the menu item structure, you can go to manage indexes to do more complex indexes, define primary keys, etc. But since we already have this set up, we're just going to go ahead and close this out. And we're going to go ahead and do the form. All right. There are two ways you can do the form. You can go right into the wizard, or you can go into the uh, designer itself. So if we double click on the untitled icon, uh, we have a, a choice of doing the wizard or the designer. And we're going to go ahead and do the wizard here. Uh, we choose our sales data table. Uh, we're going to go ahead and include all the fields uh, to be included on the form. Here you can choose the layout style. There's columnar, form style, grid style. Uh, we're going to choose columnar. Uh, if there are a lot of fields on the form, uh, you have a couple of choices. You can, uh, if they don't fit right on the screen, you can see the rest of the fields in pages, or you can use the scroll bar. And we're going to go ahead and use the scroll bar. Okay, here you can set the look and feel of your form. Um, there are a whole host of, of schemes that you can use. You can use the leather scheme, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can go on and on and on. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and choose the default, which is DBase Plus default. Uh, you can have other options for setting uh, the non-editing components like text fields, uh, editing components like entry fields, push buttons, shapes, form, etc. Okay, first we're just going to go ahead and run the form uh, so we can save it. So we'll run the form and save it as sales. Okay, here's our sales form. Um, you'll notice up here in the menu bar uh, all these little icons. These are already tied to the data in the sales form. So if you want to navigate, you can just use these menu options. Uh, you can also use the delete rows, add rows, etc. But I want to do a little bit more with it. So we're going to go ahead and put it in design mode. OK, we're going to widen this form out a little bit. Because the first thing I want to do is I want to add a grid. I don't want to just see the current row. I want to see a list of rows. So we'll go over here to the component palette, click on the grid, and drag it over. Widen it out so you can uh, you know, use it the way you need to. OK. And you'll notice at first that there's no data on the grid. Um, in order to get data on there, we actually have to set the grid's uh, property uh, to connect to the data, the data link property. So we'll go ahead over here in the inspector. Now to get the inspector, this is going to be your best tool in DBase. You can see the properties, events, and methods of any object uh, on a form or any other object in the inspector. And to get there, you can click on the form. And if you go over to the inspector, you'll notice that the form is highlighted. You see the properties, events, and methods for the form. But we're, we want to change the data link property of the grid. So we're going to go ahead and click on the grid and go over to the data link property. We're going to click on the drop down and choose sales. Right away, you'll see that the data already gets populated in the grid. Uh, this is because the sales query that was created from the wizard, and if you highlight it and go over to the inspector, you'll see all of the settings for that as well. And you'll also notice that its active property is already set to true. So that's actually a live bit of data that you can see while you're designing the form. Uh, another thing you'll notice here is the SQL statement that gets created uh, when you ran the wizard for that query. 
The next thing I want to do on the grid is I don't want to see all of those columns on there. I just want to see the person's name and what their sales information was. So we'll go to the columns object, click on the wrench, and I want to see first name, last name, and invoice information, and that's it. Okay, the other thing I want to do is I want to narrow these columns down a little bit so you can see all of the data at one time. Okay, we'll close out of there. Um, what's the next thing we want to do? We want to do a little bit of programming code on here. So one option we can do is we can filter the data based on the month of the invoice date. So let's decide to uh, do that by push button. So if you go over to the component palette, grab the push button, drag it over. And we're going to use this to filter our data. So with the push button highlighted, we can either right click and see the inspector, or we can just go ahead and hit F11, and that'll bring the inspector up with the properties for the push button. So the first thing I want to change is the text of the push button. This push button one isn't very useful. Uh, we want some real information. So we're going to say January sales. Okay. And the next thing we want to do is when a customer clicks on that button, we want to have something happen. So in the Events tab, in the OnClick event, we'll go ahead and click on the wrench, and that automatically brings up the source editor where you can add any code you want uh, to have happen whenever a customer clicks on that button. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to filter that data by month. Now, there's many ways we could do this, but I've decided I want to do it by changing uh, the SQL uh, query on the query object. Now, we already saw that the query object was called Sales1, so to reference that, we go form.sales1. Now, I'm going to set active, the active property that we saw earlier, I'm going to set it to false because we're changing the query itself, so we want to inactivate it first. Uh, then we'll set form.sales1.sql, that's the SQL property, and we're going to change the select statement of the SQL property. Okay, so we're going to say select all from sales.dbf where, and we're going to use something called the extract function. We're going to extract the month from invoice date and and that and that has to be equal to one which is going to represent January whoops I have to move this over okay and that's our SQL statement <clears throat> excuse me SQL statement after that we have to make the query active again or we're not going to see the data so we do form Oops, pardon me, sales1, active, true. And that's pretty much it. That's all we need to do for that little function. So we're going to X out of there. This is the source editor, by the way. And all when you ran the wizard, all of those objects were generated automatically um, in the source code. OK, so let's go ahead and run our form. Up here in the menu option, there's a little run form icon. And that's our form. Um, we can do our navigation still. Uh, we can also use that little function that we created to lim limit the data to only January sales. Um, so that's it. That's a cute little application. Well, what do we want to do with it? We want to deploy that to an executable that we can distribute to people that don't have DBase Plus. So all you would need are the runtime files and the BDE and this application that you're going to create. So the first thing we need to do is we need to compile that little form, that sales.wfm. So I'm going to say compile sales.wfm, enter. And it, what it did is it created a compiled object of that form called sales.wfo. So we're going to use that object to build our executable. And we'll use the build command, sales.wfo, enter. And we're done. I already created one, so we're just going to over, overwrite the one I created. And it'll create it in the same directory that you're already in in the navigator. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We'll go to C, trial demo, and we'll run our sales executable. 
Okay, and there you have it. Um, a little application, you can deploy it to any desktop you want. You don't have to have DBase Plus running, and it works just like the application we had uh, in DBase. So I'm going to close out of this.